to our monthly webinar about obesity treatment in Mexico, medical tourism. Uh, subject of our presentation is COVID-19 and obesity, the collision of the two pandemics. Um, after the COVID pandemic hit, it was obvious that we all need to take a better care of our health. And one of the problems with getting infected with this disease was underlying medical conditions and obesity was a big factor. And we all learned that we need to uh, lose weight. We all need to be active and have a healthy diet and healthy lifestyle. Today's presentation is um, by myself. My name is Ron Ellie. I'm the CEO and founder of Mexico Bariatric Center, MBC. Uh, Dr. Miguel Montalvo is one of our surgeons that he's going to join us. Um, he just finished a surgery and he's joining us in our office in Tijuana. And we'll be presenting uh, our monthly webinar. Um, so we do have a raffle and everyone who has filled out a health questionnaire prior to this webinar or during this webinar is um, basically entitled to have that name be entered in the raffle at the end of the webinar for $2,000 off. Um, the surgery needs to be scheduled today for the winner and needs to be performed 45 days after today. Um, you need to go, uh, if you haven't done that, go to mexicobariatriccenter.com forward slash health dash questionnaire. Fill out the health questionnaire and select Dr. Montavo, Miguel Montavo, and uh, be present to the uh, end of the webinar. People who have filled out the health questionnaire before, uh, we can switch their name so they don't have to resubmit the HQ. So just tell us that we switch you to HQ. This is only for sleeve surgery, the two thousand off, and is only for Dr. Montalvo. Um, the subjects that we are going to cover today is um, about obesity, risks of being overweight, COVID-19 risk factor, we lost surgery, Mexico Bariatric Center about us, and different surgery options questions and answers. At the end, we let uh, people ask questions and we answer. And then at the end, we have the raffle for $2,000 off of the package. Uh, obesity basically is a chronic disease that is pretty much worldwide. That's why we call it a pandemic. And um, it is basically um, several factors like genetics, the environment, your developmental history, and is caused pretty much by the increased nutrients, con nutrient content of food like fast foods, sugary drinks, and lack of activity, exercise, stress, not getting enough sleep, and um, um, 
the weight gaining drugs. Let me uh, just call, just for. Sorry for the interruption. So um, how, um, basically when we gain weight, our fat cells start changing structure. And as you see on the right side of my screen, um, on the lower part, you see a lean adipose tissue. And you, on the top part, you see somebody who is overweight, as you see, the structure, everything is different. So once the structure of the fat cells change, now uh, all of a sudden our body is not gonna be sensitive to insulin. You get uh, diabetes type two. You're not gonna be sensitive to leptin. You don't get sa satisfied from the food as before. You're not sensitive as much to vaccines and um, medication, like therapies. How is the obesity defined? Basically, there is a formula which we call body mass index, BMI, and you just plug in your height and weight and it gives you a number. Anything below 25, it puts you in the normal range. Above 25 to 30, you're starting to get to the overweight. And as we get over 30, now we are in the obesity range. And after 40, we call it morbidly obese or super obese. Obesity is impacting 40% of adults in the US. And like I said, it has major risk factors. So I'd like to watch this video. Look at this. Our diaphragm is one of the major muscles that helps with breathing. Breathe in in the diaphragm. Chats are one of the same oxygen. But you know, these are not going to push on the back. So the problems are like heart disease, stroke, lung disease, diabetes, like I said, um, impaired immune system blood clots, insensitivity to leptin, insulin, and chronic inflammation. As far as um, COVID is concerned, the COVID proteins basically connect themselves to the receptors on the fat cells. So the more fat cells you have is like there is more places for COVID to connect to. So, so it acts like a reservoir for coronavirus. So the more fat cells, the higher chance of catching the disease. It's been shown by a study in a national done that 113% of people who are obese, the uh, likelihood of ending in the hospital is 113% more. Same thing, obese patients with COVID are 74% more likely to end up in the ICU. And 48% more likely to die. Now, you know, we have gone a full circle. We have gone from initially when we had COVID.
COVID, and then we went to Delta, and now we went to Omicron. And now this Omicron wave, luckily, is on the downside. So that's great. But the underlying medical conditions still have the same issues with our health. Um, of course, during the pandemic, it didn't help to uh, for the shutdowns and stay in-house and not being able to get fresh grocery. Um, so now the, the question is, uh, how do I cure this disease, the, the obesity disease? Well, one would be just the answer is, well, diet and exercise and medications like pharmaceuticals. And well, that's a great option, but doesn't work for everyone. And also it's proven not to be a long-term solution. We all go on a yo-yo diet, we go on diet, we lose weight and we regain it and maybe much more. So what is a definitive solution for curing this disease is weight loss surgery. Bariatrics is a quick, proven, safe, and long-term solution to get rid of the extra fat. And the way I look at it, and I can explain the best is why is it why is it quick? Why is it long term? So the 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 figure on my right side of my screen shows that an individual in the red, which is number one, has a weight of 250 pounds. He weighs 250 pounds at that uh, weight his body, his brain, his hormones is all functioning and interacting at 250. So we call that's your thermostat. So your body thermostat at 250 is used to operating around that weight. Let's say you go through a diet and extensive exercise, like a boot camp type of exercise, and you manage to bring down your weight to 175. Your brain and your hormones, your brain gut hormone interaction still is used to that 250. And what it does, your body is going to react to that by increasing your hunger and lowering your metabolism. So it means you're not gonna bear as much fat and you're gonna get hungry. Now, when you get the bariatric surgery, the minute that they cut your stomach, they wake you up after surgery, your brain all of a sudden see you at a lower thermostat. It sees you at 175, and wants to bring you down to 175 by lowering your hunger so you're not gonna get as hungry as before and your metabolism goes up, which means you're gonna burn the fat. That's why in a year or two after the surgery, you lose the extra fat. And it keeps it like that because your brain is going to operate with your hormones your gut hormones and your brain are going to interact at a lower settings, at a lower thermostat. Not everyone can qualify or be able to manage uh, the out-of-pocket expenses of insurance to get the uh, this life-changing, life-saving surgery. And um, the question then comes like, how do I get this precious tool without 
you know, going through insurance. And if you if you don't have insurance, pay forty thousand dollar to get it done. But the answer is medical tourism, going to Mexico and get top quality, all inclusive packages that you can afford. So that's where Mexico Bariatric Center comes to picture. Mexico Bariatric Center is a US-based corporation. Uh, our main office is in Sacramento. Of course, we have employees pretty much in Texas, other places in the US and Canada. Um, our mission since the inception has been helping patients to get rid of their oh, uh, extra weight by providing high quality, affordable, all inclusive packages with top surgery. Um, so Mexico Bay Actors Center has been in business 10 years. Um, those numbers are old. We are at 17,000 plus bariatric surgery, successful surgeries performed. And we work with six or now seven top quality bariatric surgeons in Mexico. Um, the, the process to get this uh, surgery is pretty straightforward, is one, two, three. You fill out the health questionnaire, you get approved, you pay the deposit of 350, you can get, get on the calendar and book your, uh, book your surgery, then you book your flight, you submit your paperwork, and you're on your way to go in Mexico and get this life-changing surgery. So it's a worry-free, all-inclusive all packages that we offer. So you don't have to worry about anything. All you have to do is get yourself either drive or fly to um, our San Diego pickup place, which is airport, San Diego International Airport, and everything from there flows. Um, our packages include the first night in the hotel, and then we stay, you stay in the hospital two nights or three nights or one night, depends on what procedure you get. And we offer the medications, nutrition support, private transportation, aftercare support, all included in the package. At least for now, the, it sounds like coronavirus is under control, but um, hopefully we won't get another wave, but we still have to be cautious. We still do our testing the way we've been doing it all along. Um, we do all the um, measures, standards, protocols down in Mexico to make sure you have the safe travel back and forth, a safe surgery. Um, we want you to fly or drive to be picked up before noon on the day of your arrival and uh, schedule your departure around 2 p.m. on the day that you leave. Like I mentioned, um, this is the team of surgeons we have. Um, we have Dr. 
Miguel Montalvo today with us. Uh, other surgeons, we have Dr. Luisiana Valenzuela, Dr. Alejandro Gutierrez, Rodriguez Lopez, and Dr. Jacqueline Usana. Dr. Usana actually does part-time in Guadalajara and part-time in Tijuana. She works for us. And Dr. Jesus Seja. We use a center in Mexico for our surgical team that has been doing this for years. Uh, they are specialized in bariatrics. They have ICU, state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, we use Hyatt Place as well as Fairfield Marriott and uh, for our hotel stay and uh, your companion stay in hotel. So when you come, you get a relaxing night to spend at Hyatt or Marriott. And then the next day you'll be going to the hospital for your surgery. Uh, on the day of the surgery, they're going to pick you up at the time they tell you and you be taken to the hospital. And after the hospital, you be taken back to San Diego to back home, whether you drive or fly back home. Um, one of the success, uh, reasons for our success and low complications, extremely low complications, is our load management. Um, for our surgeons, so we cap our surgeons at ma maximum of four per day depends, of course, on the complexity of each procedure. And that combined with the expertise that the hospital has, has put our complication below 1%. Um, the literature in the U.S. is at 2.8% and we are below 1% complication rate. Um, I'd like to introduce Dr. Montavo. Um, let me see if he got on finally. Okay, so um, it looks like we had one hour um, mistake here. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to answer some of the questions. And um, at 10 o'clock, we, we have Dr. Montavo um, talk about the procedures. Okay, um, we're going to go back on this slide 
um, about hormones. So we have a lot of time uh, here. So basically, um, there is an interaction between our gut hormones and our brain, which is shown in this picture. I hope, uh, let me see, make sure you can see, yeah. And in this picture, as you see, whole thing. It's pretty actually complex. And um, if you look at the food digestion, how the food comes to the stomach and it gets combined with the bile and the pancreatic juice, and then it gets to the intestine and goes down, it gets digested here. 
Um, also, that's another interaction of the stomach, pancreas, and adipose tissues with brain. Um, so the hormones that are responsible for hunger is called ghrelin hormones. Ghrelin hormones are residing or sitting on top of the stomach in the right side on the greater curvature of the stomach. And when we do, let's say, uh, gastric sleeve, right? They cut about 80% of the stomach. Uh, let's go. Right, this figure here. So after cutting and stapling this stomach and make it smaller, most of the ghrelin hormones go away. That's why you don't get hungry as much. And then the hormone changes also affects the way those hormones are interacting with your brain. That's why we got the gut hormone interaction gets reset or it gets changed. And your body thermostat gets changed. Back to this figure we had here. That on the right side, um, Um, as you see, the individual who had bariatric surgery, right away, the body thermostat is changed because the hormones are changed. The same thing in the bypass, the bypass when you cut the stomach. Every time you cut the stomach, the hormones are changed. As a result, the hunger gets you not as hungry as much, your hunger goes down, your metabolism goes up, you burn fat. So, So I hope I answered that question for you. Um, Faith, I hope that I answered the question for the hormones. Um, another question is, why are the doctors against Americans coming to Mexico to get procedure done? Well, um, So, not actually, I mean, we can generalize that um, there are some doctors that may not be happy for patients to go down in Mexico and get weight loss surgery. Um, right now, Timona is becoming the center probably worldwide for bariatrics. The doctors that are operating in Timona right now are extremely skilled and extremely experienced. Of course, you need to do your research to find a company that you can trust. They have a name. They're not a flyby company. 
and they take care of you from A to Z. Everything goes smooth, as smooth as possible. Um, but I mean, one of the reasons that they may not be um, in favor of going to Mexico also is the residual income because they're feeling like, oh, I, get, I don't get to visit this patient anymore or things like that. Um, but not, we have, if your doctor is not in favor of it, uh, you can ask us to see if the area that you live, we have somebody that is actually in favor of you going down there. Also on our support group, our Facebook support group, you can um, um, ask other patients in your area. We have uh, almost in total of 10,000 patients on our support group. You can ask them to see if they can refer you to the one that they're using that is taking care of them. So I hope I answered that for you, Monica. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that was a... Uh... Okay, so... Does it hurt following the gas exit? Okay, so this comes up, we're gonna to probably touch on this again and again. Um, yes, Cora, I will make sure you're in the raffle. As long as you guys do the health questionnaire, we can enter you in the raffle. And of course, attend the webinar to the end. Um, so let's go to, to the vitamin. And also that answers Monica when she's asking about hair loss. So anytime you do a surgery, a few months later, your body changes and that's why you lose weight. I mean, I mean you lose your hair, some hair. Not everyone use, loses hair, but some do, but it comes back. And also the vitamin is huge factor, okay? So that's why we've been recommending highly to take a bariatric vitamin. I'm going to go to that last slide. So this last slide show the bariatric vitamins that we offer. We call the Emerge Bariatrics and it comes in a soft, chew, chewable, drinkable wine capsule. And you wanna try the one that your stomach can take the, mo the best. And this has necessary ingredient supplements for you as a post-bariatric patient, post-weight loss patient. Because the, the formula and these vitamins are according to the ASMBS, which is the American Society of Me uh, Metabolic and Bariatric Surgeons in the United States. They have a guideline of what component and what, how much of each component this needs to have. The regular multivitamin that you buy from over the counter has certain ingredients, but that's for people who are their stomach is normal. You, if you take more, you get more of certain component, but you don't get as much as the other ones. So this is customized to your needs. You also need to take B12, iron and calcium if you need to. And also for hair, uh, hair loss, um, it's good to take vitamins. So, and remember, your first 
two years, you're going to lose weight. Your nutrition, your taking vitamin determines your long-term success. You want to be successful eight years out, 10 years out. 10 years from the date of your surgery, you want to still maintain the same weight and you want to keep your body nutrition-wise intact. That's why you have to eat healthy after surgery and be active. Of course, your, your new stomach, your new system is going to dictate you to eat healthy anyway, but you still need to work on it yourself for long-term success. Um, so, so these vitamins are a huge factor of your success. Some um, doctors or some people say, well, just take regular multivitamin. No, the answer is no. And another thing is, Um, you know, um, yeah, I forgot one too. Okay, for joining the support group, our Facebook support group, you need to. Well, we have two Facebook support groups one is our, well, we have three actually, one is our general that is public. We have one that when you apply and you fill out a health questionnaire, you can go to that one. That's kind of like a, to see what it's like. But once you get the surgery, then you enter to the main support group, which has, over, uh, I think, over seven or 8,000 people in there. That's the one that you can only join after you have had your your surgery or you've been actually once you schedule your your surgery you're eligible to enter that one We're going to talk about this, uh, how fast can you go back to work? Uh, but we want you to be, uh, go easy for two weeks after your surgery. That means not lifting heavy weight, not get exhausted. But you can, if, if you have a desktop kind of um, job that you sit behind a desk, you could go back maybe in five days. Um, you feel a little tired, but that's about it. This is, remember, this procedures are, is performed laparoscopically. So it's not invasive. If you do heavy lifting and stuff, you may wanna keep for a few weeks off. And the same thing with working out, you, you don't do any heavy workout until maybe six weeks out, at least. Um, but you can walk, you can do a bunch of other things that is not heavy duty to get activity going. Okay, so the, the way it works again is like you fill the health questionnaire, you pay the deposit, now you are eligible to, to get on the calendar and book your surgery. But without paying the deposit, you cannot book your surgery.
I'm going to go back to the very first of our presentation. So I had, um, I actually started too early and um, just wanna go back review some of the stuff we talked about. Um, Everyone who has filled out a health questionnaire before or today and attend the webinar to the end is eligible to join the raffle. Their name is going to be entered automatically in the raffle. Dr. Montalvo, are you? Um, do you hear me? Do you see me? Have you joined? Hi, good morning. Hey. How are you doing? Great, great. Thanks. Sorry, I, I started a little early and then I kind of went through things and I'm just backtracking right now. Uh, so still, I still see some people joining. We kind of went over some of the slide and I don't know if you heard me or just answering some of their questions. Um, let me see here um, if you have some more. Okay, maybe we can start answering some of the questions like one says, does hysterectomy affect the weight loss? Okay, all right, all right. No, it doesn't affect, it doesn't affect uh, on, on, on the weight loss, uh, it's not related. Because the the obviously weight loss is related only with the with the with the stomach or the malabsorption or or the restrictive diet, but not with the with the hysterectomy. Obviously, you need to go with the with your gynecologic to to some uh, follow ups on the on the to take good levels of your hormones, but uh, it's not directly related. Okay, well, um, I think we, we can get started. Um, so now we have Dr. Montalvo and we have all of our attendees almost. I don't see very many joining now. So we're, we're in a good spot. Um, again, the, we do monthly webinars about obesity, how to cure obesity, and what is a medical tourism and how medical tourism can help you manage lowering your weight and get healthy again. Um, we've been calling it for the past two years, collision of two pandemics. So obesity and COVID-19. COVID made us aware and it highlighted the fact that we all need to live a healthy life and take care of ourselves. And uh, obesity was one of the risk factors that made COVID-19 even more dangerous. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. The good news is 
COVID is kind of under control again, at least in the US, um, as well as Mexico, actually, when I went last time, about two times ago, they told me, Ron, don't eat in the restaurants. <laughs> it was bad. Um, but this last time, things were kind of getting back to normal in Tijuana as well, which is good to see. Um, looks like all the businesses coming back again in the US, so that's great. But the fact that we have to take care of our lifestyle and be healthy and living a, li a healthy lifestyle hasn't gone away. So probably this is the best time actually to jump on the plane or drive and go to Tijuana and take care of extra fat, you know, um, once forever. So again, today I'm presenting this webinar. Uh, my name is Ron Ellie. I'm the CEO and founder of Mexico Bariatric Center, MDC, and I have pleasure having Dr. Miguel Montavo, our top surgeon in Tijuana. Um, one more time is if you guys have not held the fill out a health questionnaire. If you have, even if you haven't selected Dr. Montavo, it's okay, we can switch you. And all you need to do is attend the webinar all the way to the end. We, we, we watch your attendance. And at the end, we do the raffle for $2,000 off of surgery. Your surgery needs to be scheduled today with the deposit paid and surgery needs to be per performed no later than 45 days out from this date. Okay, so um, we talked about um, obesity. Obesity is a chronic disease, is worldwide pandemic, uh, is determined by your genetics, your environmental exposure, and your developmental history. And there are so many factors that is contributing beside genetics to us being overweight. Uh, the fast food, the processed food, the sugary drinks, lack of activity, stress, not getting enough sleep, some of the drugs we take, those are all contributing to being overweight. And when you overweight, it's not like, oh, um, there are changes in the body and it starts with fat cells. The fat cells of a lean person, which is shown on my right side of this screen, on the lower part, you see the structure, the composition of this adipose tissues or fat tissues are so different from the one on the top on the right side of my screen. And as a result, your body starts to be insensitive to insulin. You, be, you become diabetes. Um, your, your body gets insensitive to leptin. You don't feel satisfied after you eat. You feel like we still need more and more. You are not going to respond to vaccination as well. You're not going to respond to therapies as well. And we said, well, how, how is this uh, obesity defined? Well, we have a simple formula. Of course, that's not for everybody, but just the gener general formula to categorize where you're, you're standing on this chart. If you plug in your weight and height into this formula and give you a number below 25, that's great. You are in a normal range. If it gives you a range of 25 to 30, now you're starting to get to the overweight zone. And after 30, you become obese. That's the definition of obesity. Now, if your BMI is even higher, it is over 40, now you're in a morbidly obese or a super obese. 
um, obesity is affecting everybody uh, around the world. Um, maybe some countries more, some countries less. U.S. population, 40% affected by obesity, has major risk factors, like we said. Uh, I want to watch this video, which is my favorite. Um, again, the underlying medical conditions that you get from obesity is heart disease. Um, stroke, diabetes type two, lung disease, all these kind of immune, impaired immune system, chronic inflammation. We talked about insensitivity to leptin and insulin, blood clots, you name it. Um, certain type of cancers, um, or, or, or arthritis, the joint problem. Um, so, and then, the COVID came and coronavirus came and that was like more problem on top of more problems. So the COVID virus proteins attach themselves to the fat cells and the more fat cells you have, the more reservoir you have for coronavirus, the more chance of it that you get infected with this disease. Obese people, this is international study was done. 113% more of a chance if you're obese to end up in the hospital. 74% more chance of ending up in ICU, 48% more likely to actually die from it. Pandemic didn't help, all the shutdowns, staying home, not having access to fresh grocery, these all contributed to even more weight. You know, the clubs, all the workout places was closed. Um, no outdoor activities, you know, I remember all the parks, the courts were all closed. You couldn't get anything done. Um, so the question is now, how do I get rid of my extra weight? Okay, diet and exercise, pharmaceutical. Um, So, so diet and exercise is great, but not is not for everybody, and it's um, is not a long term solution for obesity. Weight loss surgery, which we call bariatrics, is proven is a quick, is a rapid, safe and a long-term solution to get rid of your obesity. We kind of went over this about the brain gut hormones. Okay, when you do exercise and you lose weight, your body still is used to your old weight. That's why it's gonna resist you by making you eat more and not burning as much as before. So your metabolism goes down, your hunger goes up and wants to take you back to the weight you used to be. When you do bariatric surgery, however, it changes your hormones. Your gut brain hormone interaction changes. So therefore, you don't get as hungry as before, and your metabolism goes up. That uh, illustration on my right side shows this person who has lost weight 75 pounds, pounds to get with the diet and exercise in the yellow, and with the green is a permanent 175 pounds because the brain sees you at a lower weight because your 
hormones are changed. When you, when the surgeon take 80, 85% of your stomach, all the ghrelin hormone, which is responsible for hunger, is all being taken away. So of course, um, Dr. Montalvo is gonna go into more detail down the road in our presentation, but this is pretty much simple way to say, why is it permanent? Why is it quick? That's why. Now it comes down to, okay, so how do I get this live saving, life-changing surgical treatment? Well, if you have insurance, some of the insurances cover in the US and a lot of them don't. And even if they do, they have you run around, go through hoops and loops and your deductible is actually end up being more than what you pay us for all inclusive top quality procedure. And you can get it as soon as maybe four weeks, depends on your BMI. So if you're uninsured, underinsured, medical tourism and NBC is the solution to get this life changing tool and lose weight. So Mexico Bariatric Center, NBC is a top medical operator in Mexico. We are a US based company corporation in Sacramento. Of course, we have people working for us even in Canada, in other parts of the US. And since inception, we have been committed to helping patients to cure their obesity by offering top quality, still affordable packages in Mexico. Um, we have 10 years in medical tourism. Actually, this year is the 10th year that NBC was formed back in 2012. We have done 17,000 bariatric surgeries, successful bariatric surgeries, but soon we will be at 20,000. So we're talking about 10 years, 20,000 surgeries, seven top qualified board certified bariatric surgeons that you can find in Mexico. And they're dedicated to to help you take care of your disease. Um, our process is one, two, three. You fill out a health questionnaire, you get your approval, you pay the deposit, you get on the calendar, you book your flight, you are on your way to go down. Well, some people, of course, you know, they drive or fly, you do the paperwork, Make sure you get your passport and you're done. You're going for this life-changing experience. I mentioned worry-free, all-inclusive packages for sleep, bypass, duodenal switch, gastric balloon, endoscopic, laparoscopic procedures. You stay, I'm sorry, the first night in the, in the hotel, two nights, three nights, one night, depends on what procedure you get in the hospital, all the pre-op, post-op tests, the, the aftercare, nutrition support, transportation is all included. Like I said, this is probably the best, day, best, best time for you to go down there and get this life-saving procedure. Um, you know, we've been operating pretty much through all COVID and our protocols are solid down there in Mexico, making sure that the patients go safe, get the surgery and come back. We want you to arrive to San Diego International Airport before 12 noon whether you fly or um, 
or drive. That's the pickup time. That's a pickup place before noon arrival and 2 p.m. departure, which means when you released from the hospital or hotel and going back to U.S., your flight, your departure should be set at 2 p.m. Again, if you haven't filled out the health questionnaire, do so. Select Dr. Montavo. The surgery, it's only for raffle for ghastly sleep. You need to book today and get the surgery done 45 days from today. This is a list of our surgeons, Dr. Montavo. Of course, uh, we have pleasure to have him today. Dr. Louisiana Valenzuela, Dr. Alejandro Gutierrez, Rodriguez Lopez, Jacqueline Osana, and Dr. Jesus Seja. We use a center that has been doing this for probably the same amount of MBC has been in business, maybe a little longer. They are specialized in bariatrics and they have ICU top of the line equipment, their OR. And we use Hyatt Place for your hotel stay. We also use Fairfield Marriott. Alternatively, um, the first night you, you come, you relax in the hotel, whether you come alone or with your companion, and your companion stays in the hotel while you go back to the hospital. They can enjoy a free breakfast um, at Marriott on a surgery day. You show up in the lobby for at the time they uh, have instructed you. They pick you up, they take you to the hospital and you get your surgery. Um, we do multiple leak tests. We instruct you to, to walk around after surgery to get the gas out. Now, there was a question that, oh, how painful is the surgery? It's not painful because it's done laparoscopically. It's only um, they make a few incisions and that's it. Um, the gas, however, can be uncomfortable, can create some pain for you. And also the drain could be a little painful, but once they remove all that and you get the gas out, you're good to go. Uh, on the day you fly back home or you drive back home, again, 2 p.m. is the time because we wanna have enough time to get ourselves across the border. We recommend highly for you to bring a passport card or a passport book. Recently, luckily, the medical lane has been great and uh, we go through pretty fast, relatively fast, but you never know, things change daily. Uh, we wanna make sure our drivers have enough time to get you so you don't lose your flight. One of the reasons for our success, one of the reasons for our low complication rate is our load management of our surgeons. We make sure they don't have a whole lot of surgeries per day and a whole lot of surgeries that are complex per day. So based on the complexity of the procedure, we give them a certain number per day that we cap it at. Usually is around four, three or four, depends on the surgeon. And that combination with the expertise from the hospital has made our complication rate to be under 1%. Remember in US alone is at 2.8%. So we are one below 1%. Dr. Miguel Montalvo has a great um, surgical team. Of course, he is an experienced top surgeon in Mexico. We're very proud to have him work with us. 
and I mean, um, he's one of the most trained, most educated surgeons you can find. Um, we do offer sleep bypass, mini bypass, revisional surgeries, and he's expert in all these items that I mentioned. I'm going to let Dr. Montalvo get more into medical details of each surgery is and let him take over. Hi, hello, good morning to all our patients. Um, starting to talk about the, the kind of surgery. Uh, the gastric sleeve surgery is, is the, the most common procedure in the world. Uh, in, this, in this procedure on gastric sleeve, we remove uh, like the 80, 85% of the stomach using to one to five tiny incisions. These incisions are like five millimeters and only one of 10 millimeters off of the belly button. And there's is where we take out the stomach. Uh, how, how a lot of patients ask, how do we measure how we're going to remove? And uh, that depends on the boogie we put inside. The boogie we, we put inside your stomach is a 36 French boogie. Is that the standard, is a standard measure to the, to the gastric sleeve, all right? So uh, this procedure, when we remove that, that part of the stomach, the fundus, the, the, there's a change on the, on the hormones that, that cause the hunger hormones, uh, it's called ghrelin. With, with this, when we remove this, the hunger is going to go down. So that's how you, when you eat, you're going to have less hungry and you're going to eat less because it's a restrictive procedure. Uh, the expectations is to high amount of excess weight loss. They remove the portion of the stomach with uh, cause hunger, and the name of this this uh, hormone is ghrelin hormone. Uh, obviously, when we remove the 80 85 percent of the stomach, the hot leads for uh, decrease for intake, and obviously um, all the the the. All, all the procedure are minimally invasive laparoscopic surgery. It means it will take from one, three, or five incisions. It depends on the patient. The process can be easily revised if you need in a future because it's a restrictive surgery. It means that when you want a, 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 a revision surgery, you can uh, take from a restrictive to malabsorptive surgery. It means from a gastric sleeve to a mini bypass or a RNY or a dodrenal switch. Uh, the weight loss is comparable with the, with the gastric bypass. Uh, there are no changes on the anatomy. Uh, the only change is on the, on, the, on the gastric tube that we're going to remove 80, 85% of the stomach. So we're going to, to make like a tube on your on your new stomach, and the the recovery the recovery is 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 very is very short. If you need to uh, re want to return or need to return back soon to your to your work, yeah, uh, you can. It depend of, of what do you what do you do, and the cons uh, can worsen pre-existing acid reflux or GERD. This is not a a, a legible procedure with for this kind of patients because obviously. Uh, is going to be a uh, restrictive, a restrictive or or a uh, uh, less uh, uh, the the inside of the tube. This this uh, is more pressure inside. Obviously, the pressure go up, all the gas, all the food, and the work, the, the guard or the acid reflux or the heartburn is going to be uh, worse. So it, uh, it's not a reversible procedure. And the, the duration, it depends of, of, of uh, approximately one hour, one hour and a half, it depends of, of each surgeon. The hospital, it will be two nights at the hospital. And, and other of the questions, 
uh, if, if the we stable and if we uh, suture the, the stomach, yes, we, we do. Next, please. Uh, the, the restriction, the, the gastric sleep is a restricted procedure. It means that you're going to eat less portions. Uh, you're going to have less hungry. It means that when we take out the, the fundus or the 85%, they go the ghrelin's hormone. So you're going to eat, have less, less, uh, less hungry. It's a more, more, more society, uh, obviously with the leptin hormones or the fat cells and the gastric emptying is less time to absorb. The R&Y gastric bypass, the R&Y is, is the gold standard. Why? Because the, the R&Y was the first surgery uh, for, for, for weight loss, okay? It's, the, it's like, the, like the father or the oldest uh, procedure for, for weight loss. So the, the gastric bypass is a surgery forms a new stomach pouch while, while the remaining stomach stay in the place. Uh, the, the, small, the small pouch is like the 10 or 15% of the stomach only that's going to function. The small intestines are rerouting to bypass food digestion, which creates a malabsorption, reduce the calorie intake. Uh, this work, we're going to exclude approximately like two meters, two meters and a half of the small bowel. And going, this, this small bowel, these two to two, two and a half meters, we're going to connect to the to the small to the that small pouch. So that's that's the, the bypass, all right? And the other connection on the R and Y is is on the on the on the on the same small bowel. So that's that's why it's called the R and Y. Uh, the, the the expectations with, with this obviously is the to, to lose uh, the, the excess, the weight excess. The new stomach form to reduce the hunger and limit stomach capacity. This is why this, this kind of procedure is uh, a combination of both, a restricted procedure and a malabsorptive procedure. So uh, a restricted because only 10 of 15% of the stomach is, is, is there. So the malabsorptive works when we exclude the two or two, two and a half meters or in three meters in some patients, it's not going to function anymore. So there is the malabsorptive procedure. So in these in this patients uh, can have more uh, issues like the, like the weight loss, some changes on, the, on, the, on, on, on her skin, on the teeth. But if you, if you uh, have, uh, a, a good nutrition follow-up and follow our indications uh, that this can happen, all right? Then the new stomach form to reduce hunger and limit stomach capacity. Um, this other, the other function with the weight loss surgery is to resolve uh, diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol, uh, some kind of arthritis, cancer. Why? Because uh, obviously you're going to, to have a change on your, on your diet and your lifestyle. Obviously, when you make this change, uh, some, some like the 90 or 95% of our patients don't need any more to take medications for these kinds of, of, of diabetes or hypertension, uh, so, uh, cholesterol, arthritis, this kind of, of procedures, bypass, are better for patients we suffer of, of, of bad reflux or, or severe GERD. The PROS is now has a gold standard of bariatric because it's the, obviously the, the, like the father or the oldest uh, weight loss procedure. Uh, it's improved obesity-related comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, sleep apnea. Uh, some, some patients suffer from sleep, sleep apnea and, and use the, the CPAP. CPAP. Uh, when you come with us, it's very important to bring it with you, right? Because you're going to need it. And have a high success rate like the, like the other procedures. Uh, the cons can change of, 
chance of vomiting and damping syndrome is very, very important to make a research about the damping syndrome, okay? Because some patients don't know and, and, and what are the changes that you are going to, to have with the RMY because it's a, a change on your, on your transit, uh, intestinal transit. So make a very good research if you choose uh, the RMY. And the duration of this kind of surgery uh, is between two, two hours and a half, okay? It depends of each patient and his, each surgeon. Obviously, uh, it's a, the bigger surgery, it's more, more connections, uh, a little higher, little higher of, of, uh, can, uh, of risk. And the hospital is three nights, all right? Next. The mini bypass is, is, uh, is a bypass, okay, or called like the one anastomosis bypass. The, the, the connection here, uh, and different with the, with the R and Y, the connection to weight loss is the same. You're going to lose the same weight on both of them, all right? So uh, the mini bypass, we, it, we can call it like, it's like the son of the R and Y, okay? Is the most modern uh, procedure. We here we, we make a, a small pouch of the of the gastric tube, uh, which holds only four to six ounces of food, and they here the intestines is looked to connect with the new stomach to decrease the amount of calories that you absorb. Here we exclude two or two uh, mirrors of the small intestine and make the connection on the small on the small uh, pouch, gastric pouch. So the, the, the weight loss on both of them is going to be the same, all right? So uh, the, expectation, the expectations is to reduce the feeling of the hunger through the altered gut, early satiety and feeling full after small portions, reduce the calorie and nutrients absorbed. This is why it's called uh, on the bypass a malabsorptive procedure because the calories and the nutrients, you're not going to absorb all of them. So that's why it's very important in these kind of procedures to uh, have a, a good follow-up nutrition, all right? And resolve, obviously, like the others, the, the, the diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol, arthritis, um, some uh, poly, polykist ovarian syndrome, the sleep apnea, the pros is as only single anastomosis or connection. So that is, these have a, a less risk compared with the, with the iron white, right? And one of the most effective surgeries to reverse failed gastric sleeve or lab band. So this is when we convert or pass from the, with the, uh, the, the gastric sleeve, a, a restricted procedure to a malabsorptive procedure. The cons is can be chance of, of vomiting and dumping syndrome, like the R and Y, the risk of ulcers and and, and bile reflux, but it is 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 less percent. All right, the duration is two hours, between one hour and a half, two hours. It depends of each each patient and each uh, uh, surgeon, and the the nights at the hospital will be three. Next. So we, we know what we are doing at the, at the hospital and with our patients. NBC use accredited facilities. Our teams use standard infection protocols, uh, screening of all patients and the staff with CT scan and COVID-19, PCR, uh, antibacterial station available, fully compliant protective preventive measures and then do not current, currently allow visitors due to COVID-19 measures, all right? What you should be doing to avoid coronavirus? Wear a mask, social distancing, testing, vaccination is very important. Right?
Okay, I appreciate Dr. Montalvo to go on over the procedures we offer. And let me take over here and talk about financing, even though our packages are extremely affordable. If you need money to cover for the procedure, uh, you can apply some of our partners like e-financing, United Medical Credit, and MediCard is mainly for for uh, Canadians. Um, you can also look into other channels to get a personal loan from SoFi, um, Best Egg, Prosper, Lending Tree, but make sure you don't um, apply for too many places at one time because every time you apply, it hits your credit. Um, we are working with another company but we don't have um, yet put, put a solid link to our website. But again, we're constantly trying to find the most um, reliable source for you to go through. Um, so at this point, we're going to open for question and answer. Um, this came, uh, one question came that um, about your local doctor where you live, your general physician, primary care physician. Um, there are some that may not like you to go to Mexico and get surgery. Of course, once you join our Facebook group and from us, you can get probably another doctor in your area that can easily take care of you. Uh, we do recommend maybe three months after your surgery, do a blood count and see your blood level to make sure everything checks. And then after that, you probably wanna just do your regular yearly checkup. Um, so, and the, you know, there are several reasons that your surgeon, or I mean, your primary care physician may not be in favor of you going down there. Um, we actually have, um, we actually have some of the doctors in, in US and some of the doctors in Europe that themselves have come to our center and have received the procedure themselves. I know at least four or five from Texas, Utah, and there are some from Europe that I know that they came and they went through our center. Um, uh, so, so, okay, so about the lab work. So we used to do blood tests and EKG before surgery, and we had internal medi uh, medicine doctor check you out, make sure everything is good. After COVID hit, we went um, one step ahead, and we did a CT scan of your lungs, and we started doing a PCR test now. So this way, we make sure you don't have COVID and your lungs are healthy for the surgery. So this is a complete test that we're doing right now. Uh, with the PCR test, we recommend that you get that done 72 hours prior to your surgery day, not your arrival day, your surgery day, 72 hours prior to that. If you don't have access to where you live to that test, you can pay us $129 and we get it done when you arrive. That's why we want you to arrive before noon. So we have ample time to your CT scan, EKG, blood test, PCR. So no worries, you can get it down when you arrive. So that's that. Um, Of course, if you do your PCR test before you arrive, it's better because now you know for sure you don't have COVID. 
And also you haven't actually traveled to infect a bunch of other people. Um, again, the good news is, is going down. So uh, the question, another one is, can you go over weight loss and osteoporosis? I've heard that weight loss happening so fast that you can affect your bones. Is that true? Should be taking more calcium mm -hmm. if it's true. Well, I'm gonna let the Dr. Montalvo answer that, but we had this discussion about multivitamins, right? Bariatric multivitamins are a huge factor for your success, for your long-term success. You wanna be looking good and feeling good, maintaining your weight down the line, eight years, 10 years. That's why we offer Emerge Bariatrics. Emerge Bariatric Vitamins is made to the ASMBC, ASMBS, which is American Society of Metabolic and Bariatric Surgeons. They have certain guidelines of how much ingredient of what supplement you need to take. And these four types, four forms of multivitamins are made according to that standard. And that's what you need to take especially for bypass patients and do, do not switch patients. So it comes in a soft chew, chewable, drinkable capsule. Any type that it fits your, your stomach, that you, your stomach can take, you know, you should try them and see which one is best for you. And that's the one you need to take. I'm going to let Dr. Montavo talk about osteoporosis and weight, weight loss surgery. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, with the with the with the with the weight loss surgery. Okay. Obviously, patients. I already said um, the who who requires more of the vitamins and proteins will be the patients with the with the Gas, with the RNY or the gastric bypass, because this is a malabsorptive procedure, so you're not you're not going to absorb all the nutrients. So uh, that's why uh, uh, you will need you will need the, the 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 vitamins, the minerals, the the proteins uh, after after you you take this this kind of procedures. Uh, but it's very important once uh, you go back at home. To, to follow, have a follow-up with your nutritionist because uh, they need to, to calculate how many calories you will take. Not all the patients are the same. So some, and, and, and some patients have more activity than others. Uh, the, the, the work they do are more, more, uh, more, uh, more high or more uh, or less, uh, some, some Work at the office and no no need more more calories than who work uh, at, under the sun or construction building. So uh, the this is very important this this kind of follow up and with your with your uh, physician too at home because you will need you will need uh, some some tests blood tests general exams uh, to follow up and to to prevent that you going to have some kind of anemia in the future or, or uh, deficiencies, deficiency of, the, of some kind of nutrients. Um, this one is more like a travel related. They're asking, do we need to have a companion? Over 50% of our patients come along. You really don't need someone to come with you, especially now with COVID going around. Um, you're going to have our staff around you when you're in hospital, when you're in hotel. Of course, you're never alone. You always be dry, driven around, whether you go from hospital to hotel, wherever you go, you have our driver, you have our staff. So, of course, you know, there is a hospital staff, there is hotel staff, but we have our own staff that are actually taking care of you over there. So really, it depends on you. 
three say you don't need to bring anybody, but you can. Um, um, so did so we talked about the pain after the 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 surgery. So we talked about the, the, the gas is the main thing that gives you pain. It's not excruciating pain. And if you do have pain, we can give you pain medication. So the doctor can prescribe anything for you. Um, as far as the gas, if you can start walking maybe one and a half hour, two hour, two hours after surgery, that's the best remedy to get the gas out. The more you walk, the better. And also gas X is a great thing to have. They used to have the, those gas X strips. I don't know if they discontinued that. And if you, those are the best thing to have to release the pain, okay? Um, so that's that. Um, so, is the, the asking I'm anemic and I wonder if your facility offers IV iron transfusion prior to surgery. Uh, it's very important uh, patients who had anemia uh, in, in, all, in all the world, you need to have at least 10 of, of, of uh, hemoglobin to, to have a surgery. So if, if you don't have at least 10, 10 milligrams of, of, of blood, of hemoglobin, um, it will be necessary uh, to, to have a, a transfusion previous to, to the surgery, but it will depend on the case and, and, and the patient, okay? Uh, uh, iron, iron take time to, to have effect, to have effect on the blood. Uh, you will, you will uh, need to be under treatment at least three months on iron uh, to, to, to have effect and on, your, on, on your blood cells. So uh, if you are planning to come to have surgery, check your, and you, you can check your blood levels, uh, do it. And, and, and obviously when you come here with us, we, we uh, take another last of that day and, and, and we evaluate our internist. And, and he will be uh, the one who will recommend if you will need or, or not. Because remember, you're going to have a surgery. We're going to remove uh, part of your stomach or, the, or a connection. So obviously, and in that part of the stomach we take out, there's some blood. So your, your blood levels is going to, to be um, obviously more low. So that's the important to have a, a optimum uh, blood blood level. Okay, they're asking if there is a special diet prior to the surgery. Yes, there is a pre-op diet and there is a post-op diet. Your pre-op diet is determined by your BMI. If your BMI is close to thirty. You only have a two-day clear liquid. If you have higher BMI, then the number of days to be on the pre-op diet extends out. So all it is is a high protein, low carb diet, about 850 calorie a day. And you you just have to maintain that for maybe two weeks, one week or even longer, depends on your BMI. The same thing for post-op. For post-op, uh, you have four weeks that you go from liquid to solid. Now, we have a nutritionist on our staff. We do webinars for nutrition maybe at least twice a month. We send you all the instructions of what to do prior and post-op. So no worries. Yes, Dr. Cabrera is still working for our center. Um, include. Okay, so 
do you get a private room? We try to give you a private room in the hospital. Um, of course, there are other scenarios that people want to be together or they either their buddies come in together or they've been introduced to each other through social media and they want to be together in the same room or they just don't want to be alone and we put them together. But most likely you get a private room, but we can't guarantee. Depends on the load of the hospital. We cannot drive or pick up anywhere else except San Diego International Airport. That's our pickup location. Does gallbladder surgery affect anything when you're doing weight loss surgery? Dr. Montavo, they asked if gallbladder surgery affects weight loss surgery. Uh, yes, it's, it's, it's very important if you have, if you already have uh, um, an abdominal surgery to put it, put it on, your, on your HQ, because uh, obviously if, when you have a, a, an abdominal surgery, there will be some scar tissue and we need to be prepared for that, all right? So if you have some, uh, gallbladder, hysterectomy, colon surgery, uh, previous bariatric surgery. We need to know because all that are very, very, very important uh, information for us. Also, they're asking, was, was if any abdominal surgery like colon cancer, colon surgery, or uh, again, gallbladder, is a problem as far as scar tissues go for weight loss surgery? Um, well, the, the, the scar tissue that is important for us is the inside of abdominal uh, scar tissue. Uh, not not, not uh, the, the gallbladder uh, surgery, but when, when patients have some uh, a previous gastric surgery, or uh, intestinal surgery or colon surgery that can affect that can affect on, on the procedure that we need to do to you because obviously due to the to the uh, that kind of scar tissue sometimes we cannot make that connections or or make some changes on your or, or mobilization with your with your small bowel or your colon or your stomach. So that, that's why it is very important to have that kind of information. One of the um, factors can affect your weight loss, laparoscopic weight loss surgery is prior open surgery. If you have had open surgery, that's a, that's a you know, more work yes, for open surgery. Well, we have uh, a lot, a lot. Of, uh, it's expected to have a lot of scar to scar tissue inside uh, when uh, our laparoscopic previous surgery. Obviously, because on an open surgery, uh, most of the times what was an emergency surgery or or was a trauma surgery. So uh, it's it's more difficult. To, to, to have that kind of, of patient or to do the, the procedure laparoscopic due to the inside scar tissue. Okay, so they're asking about the revision from sleeve to bypass and how is that going to work and what are the results look like? What, is, what should they expect as outcome? Yes, as, as we already talked about uh, previously, um, it, it's more easily to, to make a, a revision surgery when you have a gastric sleeve uh, that is a restrictive surgery, make a revision to, a, to a, a bypass because you are going to convert uh, or to make a, a 
restrictive surgery to malabsorptive surgery. So uh, once you have this revision surgery, you, you're going to start again to, to lose weight because you're not going to absorb all the nutrition and the weight loss is going to be immediately. Then if you already have our RNY uh, or any kind of, of uh, malabsorptive procedure, it's like you having like the top of, 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 the, of, the, of the surgeries and you want a revision of that connections. Uh, that's why that's a, a higher uh, risk and, 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 the, lot, and, the, and the rate of, of success. Uh, it will depend of each patient and, and how do you or how they follow up uh, uh, a nutrition uh, uh, a nutritionist guide or physician. With which procedure is recommended for patients who have problems with GERD or acid reflux? The, 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 the bypass, the gastric bypass. The, 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 you're not eligible for, for, for uh, gastric sleep because the, the GERD or the acid reflux is going to be worse due to the, due to the, to the pressure inside of the tube of the stomach. And our patient asked here if, if we offer to take the gallbladder out uh, at the same time. Yeah, we can do it. If you have, if you have some uh, gallbladder issues, uh, you have an, the best here is to have an ultrasound. If you have an ultrasound or you know you have gallstones, uh, it's, in, it, it's important to, to take out the, the gallbladder at the same time, but it, it will depend of, it, of each patient. Uh, symptoms is already have uh, previously uh, pained or or they know they have a lot of gallstone inside we can remove it at the same time of the surgery side effects after the surgery it depends on each patient some patients when they are out of surgery uh, some patients don't have even don't have pain, uh, but the most common are nausea, are some uh, discomfort, some of the of the shoulders um, can have uh, a little, obviously, little pain due to the incisions. Um, but but we're going to put medication for all of that. Uh, and it will depend of, of, of each patient, but we have a, um, a lot of kind of medication to, to treat that kind of issues. So they're asking if they have IUD, is that going to be a problem? No, 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 it doesn't affect anything. Um, your companion, I believe your companion can go with green card, but um, so I'm not sure you're saying his passport has expired, the passport yeah, make sure it, it's okay to cross with green card, but you need to make sure everything is current. Yeah, we highly recommend you bring a passport card or a passport book. So Dr. Montavo, they're asking what, how do I know what is the best procedure for me? It depends. That's why that's important to, to fill the 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 HQs and, and put all all that that kind of of, of uh, what kind of if you suffer from from anything from diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, or maybe you don't. The only thing is that you have overweight. 
uh, and, and that will depend uh, what we recommend the best procedure for you. If you are, um, if you don't suffer from anything, uh, you don't have previous surgeries, you don't have acid reflux, uh, the best uh, I recommend, at least me, is to start with a, with a gastric sleep. Uh, why? Because how I already explained, it's, it's the more easy for you uh, to, 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 to be uh, changes in the, in the, in the, in the transit, uh, gastric transit. So if you want a, in the future a revision of that surgery, it will be better. You want to continue uh, to, to make a conversion of another procedure, it's more, it, 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 we can do it. So uh, it depends, but if you, uh, if you suffer from diabetes, hypertension, a heart disease, GERD, severe reflux, heartburn, uh, maybe um, a bypass will be better for you. It depends on each patient and, and, and what, what kind of disease you have. So yes. yeah. okay, what How should I, uh -huh. yeah? What what should my A one C be at the time of surgery? Well, the the ideal the ideal will be six. The ideal will be six. Uh, that's why uh, pa diabetic patients need to be in good control uh, before you. Uh, thinking on have a surgery, okay? Because uh, if you don't have a good control, obviously it will be affect on your surgery results, even with the, in the incision heal, okay? If you have your, your blood sugar very elevated, you can have some problems with, the, with, with healing, all right? How long Dr. Montalvo has been doing these surgeries? Like, eight years, like eight years on bariatrics. Uh, if you were treated with privilege for acid reflux and still do the gastric sleeve, uh, it will depend. It will depend if, if what kind of procedure you have previously. Um, if it's only pills or you have surgery previous, uh, we need to check when we are inside uh, if there's still some kind of surgery like the Nissan procedure uh, because sometimes some patients said they have uh, some, some, uh, some procedure or surgery and when we are inside there, the, the, that surgery, uh, it, it's, uh, it's no more there. Uh, but it will depend. It will depend. Um, for patients with, with severe reflux who take uh, pills, two, pay, two pills a day, every day for a long time, the best will be uh, a, a bypass, a gastric bypass. The abdominoplasty affect surgery? No, it doesn't affect if you have a, plastic, a previous pl plastic surgery. Um, and another... Will this procedure help with sleep apnea? Obviously, obviously, because sleep apnea is related to weight, to, to um, obesity and, and overweight. So when, when you take out all, all that uh, weight loss, the, the sleep apnea will be better or can be disappear. If you, if you, you, you use uh, CPAP, it's very important to bring it with you. Can you describe the sleep to mini bypass conversion? Uh, yes. The, when, when we have some conversions from sleep to, by, to mini bypass, we do a pouch on, the, on that a tube, a gastric tube you have. We make a pouch. It means that we cut that uh, stomach and make the connection between the small bowel uh, approximately two or two and a half meters and, and exclude of the small bowel and make a connection there 
on the on the on the on the gastric pouch. And the the risk uh, are and recovery as is, is the same with the other procedures. The most common can be uh, less less of one percent. All right, less of one percent can be a bleeding, can be uh, uh, maybe a small leak, uh, with uh, infection of the incisions, uh, but it's very rare that happens less than one percent. Also, how do you deal with malabsorption for the rest of your life? You will be, this is a malabsorptive procedure, so it's very important to have uh, a nutritionist uh, follow up in this kind of patients because uh, you need to go with your physicians for general exams every month to take your pills, your minerals, your vitamins, your proteins, because you're not going to absorb all the nutrients. So this kind of patients, if you don't have a good follow-up, that you can have some uh, hair issues or the skin or, or the teeth. Well, it, it depends. It depends on each patient. If you don't have any reflux or GERD before surgery, what is the change of developing after surgery? Well, uh, it can be, can be more often, uh, but it's like, related like the 10 or 50% to a gastric sleep than uh, R and Y. But if, if, if you don't have any problems, it's very rare to have it. Are you asleep for wall surgery? Yes, yes, you will be asleep because it's a general anesthesia. And it will be like one hour of, of OR. Did you answer the one that says, does your pouch desynthesize? How long after surgery? I don't know what that means. Mm, desynthesize. Okay, let me, let me check. Yes, yeah, about also, what about GERD? Hmm. So, I mean, acid reflux could be caused by so many factors, right? So, yes, yes, that's, that, that was, a, that was a, a very good question that uh, I was going to, to ask. Uh, patients with GERD have a lot of factors. Uh, the most common is, is the diet, is the diet. Uh, and the other most common is to have a yatal hernia. Uh, other factors is, is the, the valve we have on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the gastric, uh, on, on our gastric tube. So, um, so some patients who suffer from, from reflux, from GERD, when, when we are inside of, of the, doing the surgery, we, the first thing we, we see is the hiatal hernia. So it's very important to repair this, this hiatal hernia because first of all, to prevent that you continue with, with, with acid reflux or GERD or heartburn. The second thing, is to prevent that your new pouch go through that hole to the thorax and, and, and then can be an emergency. So that's the important to close that hole or, or, or hiatal hernia to prevent these two things. First, to, to prevent the reflux or the GERD and the second, to prevent that your, your new pouch or stomach go through that hole to the thorax and then can be a, an emergency. Um, if they have only one kidney, is that going to matter? Mm, not, not really. Uh, when, when you come here with us, we do the, the blood work. 
and your if your your kidney puncture is normal, it's no problem to have the surgery. I think the this past week I have a one a patient with with one kidney and everything went great. Um, okay, so they're asking, would you work with their primary care physician if it's needed when you know when they go back home? Would you be able, you know, if they need something, would you be able to, to get back to them? Yeah, some 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 physicians need the the records or the surgery um, the surgery uh, uh, the uh, like the oh my it's gone uh, uh, report the surgery report we can send them we can send them uh, if, you, if you need it or some if the patient is the if your physician needs some some um, anything from us we can we can send them there's no problem with that Uh, about the cost, um, are all-inclusive packages for Dr. Montalvo starts at forty-seven ninety-five for sleeve, and of course, you know we have little different pricing for different surgeons, and um, we have some specials for some sometimes, but that's the total cost for Dr. Montalvo. If we operate so, patients with psoriasis, yes, we operate patients with, with uh, this kind of, of skin issues, it's no problem. Oh, I see. So if they have had BBL before, is that going, are they going to lose it after weight loss surgery? Uh, obviously, yeah, a lot of patients, a lot of patients we had have a, a previous uh, plastic surgery so obviously there's going to be a change when you lose that that uh that weight and and your skin can be can be some changes of that okay so it, it, it will depend on the weight loss So you did mention that you would repair hiatal hernia if you find it during the surgery. Yeah, so the surgeons examine hiatal hernia. If it's needed, they, they fix it. You pay, um, I believe, 395 or something, but you, you get it fixed so you don't have reflex problem. Um, Dr. Montalvo mentioned about expected weight loss. Of course, you know, in the literature, they say you can lose an average, maybe 70% of your, I mean, it all goes 65%, some say 75, 60, let's say 65% of your excess weight loss, excess weight. Um, but that is just average. We see patients, we were just talking to one from two years ago, that he has lost 150% of his starting weight. So he was, I think, at 300, uh, he was at um, 300, I believe, and he lost about 150 pounds or some, some numbers like that is, is you can actually get to your ideal weight, whatever that is, you know, let's look at it that way. This is all, these are all numbers. What needs to happen is you go to a point that you feel comfortable with yourself, that you say, you know what, I feel good now, regardless of what number that is right? And your relationship with food gets a healthy relationship, which means you don't feel uh, 
bad that when you eat something, right? Um, you could sit down and eat a meal and enjoy it and not feel guilty, you know, uh, share food with your family, with your friends, go outings and not feel like, oh my God, I ate this or that's, that's where you want to be, that you move around easy, your vitals are all good, you feel good, you look good, and you say, I'm in a good spot. But, you know, but in general, I mean, people lose weight um, rapidly and keep it up, you know. Um, of course, for gastric sleeve, there is a little bit more work after two years on your side because you don't have the malabsorption component, but you also don't have the malabsorption component, so, so you don't have to worry about vitamins and supplements so much as a gastric sleeve. Um, Um, yeah, they keep asking. So, so um, some of the so the the enhanced driver's license is good. Can actually work instead of passport, but we do recommend you get your passport. Um, how long after having a C-section can you get sleep done? Uh, if you have a C-section, um, yeah. well, uh, if you if your baby is uh, if you have a C-section, the, the best is at least minimum one year, one year. Uh, this is because uh, some it depends too of of, of the patient because. Some some patients gives uh, breast to the to, to the baby and and you're going to be under anesthesia under medication so you you don't have you don't you, you can uh, give some breast to your to your baby but uh, but at least at least uh, yeah I think one one twelve months. Another patient asked here that she have a uh, GERD occasionally well if they if she can have the 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 sleep well um if if it's occasionally um like i already said uh you can have it because um maybe there's a yatal hernia or uh only it's only the overweight patients some patients who get under the pre-op diet the 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 GERD or there's no more GERD or reflux when with the pre-op diet that's a good sign that it's only for the overweight or is related to the diet so you can you can have the the sleep with with that right mm -hmm. yeah that's a good point yes um so the, so the the way companion works right now is after COVID, we're not keeping when the hospital actually, the government doesn't let visitors to stay overnight. So the companion stays in the hotel while you're in the hospital. Um, so, so, so you pay us and we make reservation for those two nights when your companions stay, well, two or three or one night, depends on what procedure, they stay in the hotel. We also, you know, of course, the transportation, everything else is included. It's just that hotel nights, they have to pay. If you bring more than one companion for the second and the third, companion there's extra fees so um what are the side effects after surgery 
Yeah, I, I already, I already uh, um, answered okay, that. You answered that. Okay. Yeah. What, what, so they're asking, do I need to do a lab work when I'm in US before I come? So yes, it's a good idea to do a blood test to make sure your uh, hemoglobin levels are good. Of course, we will do our own blood test when you get there, but it won't hurt to have that done when you're here, especially for the ones that are going through revision. Because once you have the first surgery, your hemoglobin could be lower. So that's why it's a good idea to do the blood test before you come to Mexico, make sure everything checks. So when you get there, we, we don't have that problem. We just test you and everything should check. Yes, here another said if she's concerned about our, our certifications, you can, you can check our all certifications on our website. Uh, we are all board certified surgeons so there's not uh, a problem. And I think well, most of our, we are uh, fellows of the American surgeon. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, can I use my FSA for my pay? No, because this is a surgery is performed outside of US and unfortunately we can't use flexible spending account. We don't need you to get to be vaccinated. We're not requiring that. Of course, vaccination like Dr. Montalvo said is a great um, thing to um, stop the virus, but we don't require that. But the PCR test is required. Okay, if, if we have a limit, age limit for surgery, the, the recommend age limit are 18 to 65 years old. But in some times, some, sometimes we can make an exception, but it will depend on the patient. So, about your arrival again, we want you to get there before noon and leave around two, your departure should be around 2 p.m. Um, if you can't manage that, one solution is to stay in San Diego or uh, come two days prior to surgery instead of one day whether you stay in Tijuana with us or you stay in San Diego, um, you, you come so, so you have enough time to get your, all your, uh, um, you know, tests done. So that's one solution. So what we call all-inclusive packages pretty much includes everything standard in the package. Now, if you, for some reason, you need some other medications that is not in the standard package that you may need yourself, then you pay the extra at the end. Or let's say if the surgeon found hiatal hernia, we charge you extra. So these are not included in the package. Yeah, so, but all the pre-op tests, post-op, all the medication, everything standard is in the package. How long it takes for incisions to heal? Okay, uh, these two, it, it depends, but um, in, you know, in one week, it will be close. Uh, but uh, we recommend not to go to a public pool uh, at least six weeks that we know uh, that, that, that 
it will be a good healing after after that time. But in 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 one week, it will be your 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 incisions will be closed. Um, we we give you uh, medications, um, pain medication to, to to take with you. So after so I believe so how long after surgery they can take the multivitamin? I believe it's about two weeks, right? Two weeks after surgery. More or less. Yes, yes, uh -huh, yeah, but uh, that's that's a uh, uh, frequently questions. Uh, obviously, you don't need the the vitamins immediately once you you get the surgery. You will need it after after two weeks uh, after two weeks of the surgery uh, because it's when the when your when your body uh, start to make the changes uh, inside. And, and, and it's most important with the patients for the, with the bypass and with the, with the gastric sleeve, because remember the malabsorption here is very important. Yeah, unfortunately they don't make those gastric, um, the gas X strips, which was a great thing to have. Um, so, so right now we are operating in Tijuana and Guadalajara. These are the two locations we are operating. So they're asking, can I take Excedrin or ibuprofen for my migraine in the future? Yeah, if, if it's the, the the pills that you use, is, we not recommend to use it immediately after surgery uh, because obviously uh, it can irritate your stomach. We need to that stomach or that surgery to heal uh, before you start with your with your NSAIDs or with your uh, non steroids anti inflammatory. Uh, you will be once you get the surgery, you will be with your with your uh, one medication protective for the for the stomach, like the meprazole, uh, to prevent that irritation from surgery. But you, you, if you if you use it, you can take it uh, in a couple of, of days. But we recommend to go with your physician so they can if you recommend something. Here another patient have heartburn but never diagnosed with GERD, can still get the sleep because she's afraid to do the bypass. This is another, another frequently question because some, some patients have a, are afraid from the bypass. Uh, it will depend, it will depend. So uh, it, it, if, you, if, you, if you have GERD from, and that GERD is related to the overweight or the diet, and, and you, you can have with no problems the sleep. But, but if that GERD is severe, is severe GERD or heartburn, and and or or is related to the internal bulb of, of the of the stomach. If you get the sleep, it will be worse. So that's why we recommend a, a bypass in this kind of patients, because uh, the the that that bulb is not going to be anymore when we do that connection. So your liquid or your or your food going is going to go directly from that small pouch to the to the small uh, intestine or bowel, and so that's it's going to we're going to eliminate the the reflux.
and the acid is not going to be more related or is not going to be more there in the stomach. So if they taking blood thinners, is that an issue? Yes, it, it depends. It depends on what kind of, of blood thinners. Uh, patients with blood thinners obviously have uh, some, some blood clots issues or have some heart issues. So uh, you need to put uh, what kind of blood thinner you use so we can make a change um, on, the, on the blood thinners so you can be prepared. This is to prepare you to the surgery. Uh, you can have blood thinners at least three or four days before the surgery because obviously this increases the, 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 the bleeding during or after surgery. But once we finish the surgery, we uh, start again the blood thinners. And your physician at home need to be uh, informed about this. The uh, other, uh, the aspirin is the other, the other uh, medication that you need to stop at least one week, one week before the surgery. Um, another service that we offer is uh, we fill out your FMLA for your work. Um, if you need to take time off for the surgery or after surgery, um, we will fill out the FMLA for you for your work. After gastric uh, surgery, we recommend at least one year before you do any plastics. Um, you want to wait until you get to a point that you're not fluctuating, your weight is not fluctuating much, and you feel like, oh, this is it, this is, this is the weight I wanna be. Maybe year, year and a half. And then if you have loose skin at that time, you can call us back for plastics. We do offer single incision surgery as well. So we don't allow companion to stay overnight. And actually that is a great thing. Um, and we still see some of the hospitals in, in Tijuana, they're doing it. Um, I don't know, Dr. Montalvo, that, is, that, is that acceptable by Kofa priests or are they just doing it? because, um, you know, it, with the COVID, there's less people going around and going in and out and making, um, you know, the possibility, this is more touches basically, and it just makes everyone more at the risk. And from what I understand, the government, the federal government of Mexico is, telling the hospitals not to allow companions to stay overnight. And if they're doing it, they're pretty much not certified by the government. Um, 
Each surgeon, like I said, is capped at maximum of four surgeries per day. Again, depends on the complexity, but they're all capped every day. So if your work is like on the computer, behind the desk, you're fine after a few days to go back to work. Just don't lift heavy stuff. Is T1 a safe? Yes. Well, there are parts of T1 <laughs> that are not safe, but we are operating in areas that are extremely high-end and safe, uh, including where Hyatt is, including where the hospital is, you're totally safe. You're always around people from our staff, so no worries. We do three leak tests after surgery, during the surgery. Um, usually the revision surgeries are more complicated there are more chance of complication and especially like uh, bypass revision, bypass to bypass revision. You may not get the same results as the first time when you got the bypass. So your complication rate goes up and your um, success rate goes down. Um, I would like to go over, um, as you see, some. these are some of the success stories here I'm going to share with you real quick. Um, I also need to show you one thing more before we go to the um, raffle. Our website has a lot of information. It's a great resource for, um, for you guys to read different articles, different revisions, different things. And uh, what we're talking about like what is a diet and exercise and so so basically the diet and exercise is for the population to lose weight and then medication um, there's also endoscopic procedures like gastric balloon esg and the bariatric is the top as you see is um it's not for everyone. You have to be knowing what you're getting into, but it's a great tool to lose weight. Um, let's go ahead and uh, see who's the winner of our webinar. Um, Okay, like I said, we need to make sure you guys um, attended this all the way. Okay, so the winner of our webinar is McKenna Imoa. I hope I didn't say the last name wrong way. It's I-M-O-H, first name McKenna. I'm going to, uh, if you still hear me and you're there, I see you online. I'm gonna let you talk. Um, let's see what happened. Cause they're jumping around. Um, you hear me, McKenna? 
Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, hi. How do you say your last name? It's Emo. It's an African emo. last name. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Emo. No, okay. Goodbye. How are you doing? Good. Okay. Are you excited to be the winner of our raffle? Yes. Before you got me on, I did a little dance and shouted and raised my hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. So which, uh, which, where do you live? I live in Utah. Oh, awesome. Okay. Okay. Love Utah. Um, and are you planning to come down to Mexico soon to get this surgery done? Yep. I will plan on coming down. Okay. Awesome. And, um, uh, You've done a health questionnaire before or you did it yep. today? I did one before and then I just redid another one when it said to put uh, Dr. Montevallo on there. And so I did. Okay, great. Yeah, so make sure uh, you get uh, contact or office and schedule your surgery today. And in, okay. like I said, it has to be done 45 days from today. Okay. Sounds great to me. Okay, great. So love to see you down there and look forward to it. Um, keep your before after pictures and share for with sure. us. <laughs> thanks. Okay. All yep. right, well, thanks for everyone attending our webinar and appreciate your time. I appreciate Dr. Montavo to spend his time with us and um, look forward to seeing you guys again. Thank you. Bye-bye.